Hello my friends, good to see you. We just passed 100,000 subscribers. That's insane. So let's do a sound design tutorial. Let me just tell you, the workflow we'll be doing today is so fast, it blows my mind. So we have our finished animation in Blender. It is a sphere going into a torus, sort of spinning around. It is a simple scene that should be easy to do some sound design for. So let's go to Output Properties and give it a name. And under File Format, let's set this to FFmpeg Video. And for some reason, under Encoding, the default Matroska container doesn't really work in all editing software. So let's just do MP4. And instead of rendering the animation, which is going to take 40 minutes. Let's just go view, viewport render animation. And now this is just going to play through and render out our viewport because we don't need the shadows or the refractions or the motion blur just to do some sound design. If you're ever talking about this process, remember to not say pre-visualization because I mean, it's, it's obviously a huge waste of time. You just need to say previs. So let's take a look at this. I just saved it to my desktop. So that took about two minutes and we have our video file ready to do some sound design. So we'll be using DaVinci Resolve 17. You don't need a studio version. You can just download the free version. It's, it's perfect for sound design. It's, it's, the, it's a fantastic software. So let's just right click and import our media. Boop. And uh, just drag it onto the timeline and go to the edit tab and you can just play. Okay, now we're ready to do some sound design. And not that anyone asked, but here's my philosophy when it comes to sound design. Have you ever written a text or a song or a story using words, you know, taking words from your brain and you're putting them in the document and the words sort of change meaning once you start rearranging them and the magic happens in the editing. And I want you to take this mindset and apply it to sound design. Instead of words that have information, you're sort of working with pieces of emotion and you're taking these emotions, rearranging these, and you're making something that's completely new, and it's such a rewarding process. And when you worked on this for hours and hours, the first sound that you added to your timeline, it's probably not in the final product. So I think the beauty of sound design is, just like writing, is that you're putting all these individual pieces down your timeline, and you're rearranging them, and you're creating something that wasn't there. And you are the only one that's going to be able to create this. You, you net it like a dough. <laughs> and that, that's sound design. That's... So the reason I think this is really important, not only do we need a lot of sounds, we need to access them really quickly. And we need to be able to just throw them instantly down on our timeline. And there is one software that just does this, and it is the best freemium software I've ever tried in my life. So here we are in just the free version of Soundly. I think it's getsoundly.com. And let's just search for metal. So the beautiful thing about this software that I haven't seen anywhere else, it's, it's just so good. So let's say, oh, that's one. That's the one I want. You can just mark it and you drag it onto your timeline. And now we have it here on our timeline. That sound doesn't work. So let's search for whoosh. Perfect, so let's take this one and you can just drag it and smack it on the timeline. And then just take, okay, there we are. Move it over there. You can turn off this magnet thing if you like, so you can move it freely. How fast is that? Okay, so what more do we need? We need a um, some sort of motion sound here as well. Okay, so this one is good. Let's take this one, drag it down. Let's go to Inspector and select the sound clip, click Speed Change, and then you can just slow this down. Remember to turn off Pitch Correction. And you have sort of like a slower version of the sound. So let's go here. Okay, so it's too slow. Let's do 80%. And let's make it much more quiet. And then you have these handles on the side. You can just like swoop and swoop and now it's fade it fades in and out 
And if you want to duplicate it, you can just hold Alt and you can do like this. But listen to that. That's dangerous. Using the same sound twice, our brain sort of like, hey, that's we, we just heard that, didn't we? And I think your brain is super good at this. So I want to try and avoid that. So let's just take another one. Swoop, drag it down. We want to transfer the stuff we did on this one to the next one. So let's take the first one, control C, and the next one, right click, paste attributes, which is Alt V. So Alt V, swoop. And let's just check all of this, apply. Amazing. You know, I think this is too violent. I think we need some... This is cool. So this is interesting. Here we have two soundtracks and here we have just one. So if you take this one and you drag it down and listen to this. I'm not sure about you, but for me, that's just the left channel. It's quite unpleasant actually. But instead of solving this in the video editor, we can just, in Soundly, you can just right click and just set to stereo. And now this sort of fills both, it's still mono, and you can just double click the entire thing and then it selects all of it. You can drag it down. Okay, so that's weird. Okay, yeah, so I think these are way too violent. So let's try and just see if we can find something more subtle. Yeah, there we go. So let's take this one. Let's just slap it on there. Slow it down a little bit. Pitch correction off. Oh, this is perfect. So one of the great things about this library is that it's almost always more than just one sound effect. So we can take this one and then we can take this one. And now we have like three different. And we're gonna slow this down as well. Let's do 60%. This is too loud. Now this is all wrong. So let's remove this and let's try and take the last one. And let's sort of see if we can use it. You can almost immediately feel if you shouldn't be using a sound multiple times. Hmm, it might work. We might be able to speed this one up. So let's set this to 180. These are all so big, you know. I think they have I think they're too long. Okay, so that's enough whooshing for now. Let's try and do the impact sound. So let's search for metal. Yeah, let's try this one. Oh, so this sort of spins around. Let's see if we can find a spin sound. Whoa, this is perfect. Yeah, let's take this one. Oh. Let's slow this down to like 30%. So you can take this line to increase or decrease the volume, but you can make keyframes by holding down Alt and clicking this line. And then you can sort of drag it down. Hmm, let's see if we can find an impact sound. Yeah, so let's take this one. So here's what I like to do when I have two sounds and I can't really decide which one I want to use. So you can take one of them and you can press D to disable. And then you can disable this one and enable this one again. So this one has too much bass. So you can select the clip, you can go to equalizer, and then you can sort of just remove a little bit of the bass. And let's actually remove a little bit of the treble as well. And then we just increase the sound. So if you want to see your sound levels, you can click mixer and then you can set this to meters. And now you can see if your sound is peaking, which is really nice. So let's add some reverb to this. So let's go to effects library and under audio effects, let's just search for reverb, drag it down, set this to cathedral and make it less wet. 
Ooh, that might be too much. Let's just... Yeah. Okay, and I think this might actually be... One sort of too many. So let's... Okay, so I'm, I'm not super happy about this result. That's... This is the one. Yeah. Let's take this one. Oh, what? No. Yeah, when it lands. So let's stop this here. Boop. Okay, yes. Yes, so let's do reverb. Um, cathedral. Ooh. When it's set to wet, the sound sort of starts before. But once you make it more dry... That's perfect. That's the one. So this tool is amazing. And the, the paid library is even bigger. Look at this. This is what shows up if you go for the pro version. It's just And it just keeps on going. It's an insanely big sound library. Yeah, let's try it. Look how fast you can just change those three. That's insane. Let me show you something that's really important to keep in mind if you're doing reverb. So we want to do this one, but we want to add some reverb. And the problem is if we take this and drop it in here. Oh, convert to stereo. Let's take this one, throw it in. Now, if we add the reverb, let's do cathedral. Just turn this down. The, the reverb stops. And to prevent that, we can just take this one and we can take the entire thing and make give it sort of like a tail. And then when we add the reverb, set this to cathedral, swoop, delete the previous one. Now when we listen, that's what we want. Oh, that's too much bass. So when I'm saying it's too much bass, it's because it feels too close to my ears. So right now, my microphone is probably 20 centimeters away. But if I move closer, you can hear there's more bass in my voice. There are also a lot of other stuff that changes. But a nice way to just start out is to just remove a little bit of bass. Whoop. So I want to add reverb to all these three. But we're going to run into the same problem where the reverb sort of cuts off because the clip isn't long enough. So select all of them, right click, new compound clip, and let's just call this reverb whooshes. Now you can add the reverb to this clip. Let's do uh, the cathedral. Perfect. So that's much better already. Let's increase the volume. But it cuts off. So you can't extend this. Let's move it down and right click, open in timeline. Just take one of them, hold down Alt, just duplicate it all the way over here and disable it and go back to our main timeline. Now we can extend this. What I like to do is to add some ambient sounds. Let's search for space. You know what, let's do this entire thing. And then let's sort of fade it out about here. Okay, so let's have a look at the result. I've got to be honest, it's, it's not as good as I hoped it would be. <laughs> but um, I think you got all the tools that you need right now. Let's go back to Blender and render out the final version. Okay, so we're back in Blender. We're going to render this animation. We can just go render and then render the animation, right? That's like the, the best way to do it, isn't it? I mean, it, prob it should be, right? Right? You know, I was rendering the other day, as one does, <laughs> and I couldn't help but notice that in my task manager in Windows, under performance, while rendering, my CPU is at 50% and my GPU is at 48%. Right now it's at 48%, and it's rendering. Shouldn't that be like at 100%? What, am I missing something here? So here's what I did. I, you take Blender and just bring it over here. And uh, let's set this to image sequence. And let's just make a folder on our desktop called render. 
And now let's save our project file. So what if you open two instances of Blender? So here we have the exact same scene, the exact same file opened two places in Blender. And the step which tells you how many number of frames to skip, if you set it to two, and you set the frame start to two, the software is going to render every other frame. So let's go render, render animation, and uh, let's go render, render animation. And now we are screen recording and recording my camera and rendering two instances of Blender. And it, it just works. So it's been 40 minutes. Uh, <laughs> this didn't work. <laughs> the render time per frame just increased and um, don't do this. But you know, sometimes stuff work, sometimes they don't. Today, it didn't work. And that's okay. So now that our render is finished, let's close these blend files and let's move on. Because turns out, you only need one blend file. So at least we learned something today. So let's get back into Resolve and uh, take a look at our animation. So here we are back in Resolve and now we want to replace our preview animation with the final render. And that is super easy. Just right click on your footage, go to Replace Selected Clip and find the folder where you put the rendered sequence and just click on the first picture and press open. And now when you press play, you have the final result. So yeah, that's pretty much the sound design workflow. I can highly recommend checking out Soundly, not a sponsor. It's probably the best execution of freemium software I've ever seen. So Soundly, keep up the great work. They probably don't even know that I exist, but uh, that software is just so incredible. And if this workflow helped you in any way, feel free to subscribe and like the video. <laughs>